This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA, it's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the GSMC Sports Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Jeff Malinoff. With me is Mark Souza. Happy New Year to everyone. It is now officially 2019. We had the bowl games on the uh, New Year's Day that were pretty important, so we'll talk about those. We'll, we will first talk about a, uh, Antonio Brown and his future with the Steelers being in doubt, and we'll also round up some NBA stuff and then anything else we need to talk about. That's the final segment. So first things first, Antonio Brown. As we know now, he had a little uh, altercation with Ben Roethlisberger, and he was uh, benched or suspended for one game, which was a very must-win game for the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. And now they're not in the playoffs. Do you think without Antonio Brown, that is a that was one of the main reasons why? Or would well, you, I mean, they won the game. Yeah, but would you say with like with the whole drama between them two? Would that be a problem going into the playoffs? Possibly. I don't know. I, it just seems like when when a team doesn't make the playoffs or when a team fails in some way, whether it's a losing season or another team passing by them on their way to the playoffs, these things kind of come out. So I think whatever rift there is between Antonio Brown, Ben Roethlisberger, and all that, it's something that I don't think just sprung up maybe in the last month or so. It's probably something that they've been dealing with for quite some time. But again, it's been under wraps because the team has been successful. So that's that's what I think. It's just, I don't know, man. We're talking about Antonio Brown. He's a proud guy. He's a, he's a good player, very good player. We're talking about Big Ben, Super Bowl winning quarterback, like proud guy as well. I just think that a lot of times you get egos and you get – those types of things will bump heads, and those players will bump heads and move on. You know, yeah. But there, there has n- this is not uh, brand new information for uh, us because Ben Roethlisberger has had confrontations with players in the past. He's just honestly, he's not well liked on his own team, and he said some things to the media that's been questionable. Like one of the things I remember very fondly of, or not fondly, but very clearly, is. He said, "I have the right to criticize people um, on social on in the media uh, because I've earned the right to." And it's just like that's that 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 put a sour taste in my mouth, probably with the players as well. But Antonio Brown has also requested to be traded. That's also a a statement going around uh, the Steelers organization. Mm-hmm. And you, like we were talking about earlier, Antonio Brown's contract is gigantic, and. With if they do trade him before June first, they have to pay him how much? Twenty two million? I think it's like twenty one or twenty two million that they'd have in dead cap space. So mm-hmm. it's in his contract, whatever but, the language is. It uh, says they really they really can't trade him. If 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 a trade does go down, it's probably gonna be like it's just a verbal agreement before June first, and then after June first it'll be done. That's just my guess of how it'll work if it does happen. Maybe there's a lot of time. There's what, we got five oh my. full months. Six? Yeah, January, so, all of January, February, March, April, yeah, May, June, yeah. Exactly. So there's a lot of time that's going to pass and when you you can say yeah, today they're not, you know, friends or they're not on a the, the relationship isn't great between them, but who knows what'll happen in a couple months. We're going to have a draft, we're right. going to have free agency. There's a lot of things that, that are going to happen. And a question I'm going to ask you, do you see do you do you honestly see Antonio Brown playing for the Steelers again? I would say that if I put a percentage on it i'd say 75 percent that he's on the Steelers next year that's really incredible because he just signed one of the biggest extensions for a wide receiver in nfl history i think he has three three year three or four more years on it i pays around 14 million a year um 
I know it's not as expensive as Odell Beckham, who yeah. also is reportedly might be on the trade market. I don't, is he requesting a trade or he no, just no, no, might no, be on the not. trade market? I think they just want to get rid of him because his contract's so massive. And I don't know if there's really anything to it, though. It just seems like that's mm-hmm. a lot of speculation. Do you think he's overrated? Do you think that's what they're thinking? No, I, I don't think that they would trade him because he's not worth the money because they just paid him the money and he had a good season. It's not like he went right. disappointed or anything. But the problem is is that if they're thinking that we need to go full rebuild and that starts with getting a new quarterback and actually... Just a whole new offense? Yeah, it just might be one of those things that they want to go cheap, right? And then mm-hmm. build up a team over the next few years well, and then... I think they have to... They're back. obviously going to build a team around Saquon Barkley. Right, yeah. Even if whatever quarterback they get in the draft, if they get the guy from Duke or anyone, for that matter, it's going to be a fact that they're going, they might even get Browning in like the four, late rounds because, I mean, he, he might be a, 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 a yeah. quarterback to compliment Barkley. I, see, I think like for Odell, it's not about him not being good. It's just about the him being, being good, good where the team needs to kind of go through the rebuilding process yeah. and they don't the team needs to start you know how Odell up. Beckham is he's a really good player but he doesn't like to lose like he doesn't like he's been, and he's been on he's been in the playoffs once and the rest have been losing yeah, seasons and, and like so. you know he's ultra competitive and sometimes that comes out in bad ways and negative ways but he's going to be on a team that looks like they're going to be a losing team for the next foreseeable future to maybe yeah. one or two and years. it is being reported that uh Odell Beckham Jr if he is on the trading block. The 49ers will be the first ones at him. Do you think that's the right spot for him with Jimmy Garoppolo coming back and Jerick McKinney coming back to the running back position and with Marquise Goodwin at, at, as their speed back or speed receiver, excuse me? Do you think that'll be the better fit for him? Yeah, in the last 24 hours, we've seen the 49ers link to both Antonio Brown and Odell yes. Beckham. And well, George Kittle tweeted at Antonio Brown. It wasn't like yeah. the organization saying we're going to George Kittle and Antonio Brown, they were flirting. I think uh, Jimmy G was flirting with Antonio Brown, too. Uh, he, re- all, he retweeted the little conversation they were having. They were all swiping right, it seems like. Um, it, I think it's just uh, what's one of those things where the 49ers make a lot of sense because if there's a team – especially in the NFC that can really use like a, an elite outside receiver. It's San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And you could see that offense with Kittle, uh, with McKinnon coming back, Brita looking pretty strong. And then of course, Jimmy Garoppolo, if he can stay healthy, it would make a lot of sense. They do have money too. They, they have about 70 million in cap space. It looks like they'll have after they get rid of some players and with the current space that they have. So even if they got a guy like Beckham who makes, um, I think about $20 million a year, they would have plenty of room to do other things. Yeah, so, but yeah. yeah. And then we were talking like, speaking of cap space, the Colts have what? $122 million, $22 million, which is like they can get Antonio Brown, Odell Beckham Jr. Livy on bell. They can get, they get all three. Yeah. And they if, can get more in theory. They could have all three and T Y Hilton on the and offense. more. And Th- more. I could see that you can They're add more to that. They're a scary them. team for the foreseeable future. Yeah, they are definitely a... If I was buying stock in, in NFL teams, I think oh, that yeah. I'd probably put most the of Colts. it in the Colts. I could see them as like like the Patriots going downwards as not the Kings of the AFC and the Colts take that reign. Like There's people, an opportunity. Pe- people say like, oh, the Chiefs are taking that. They have the first seed. Man, the Colts look way better as a future uh, dynasty or power team than the Kansas City Chiefs do. Yeah, absolutely. Just based off caps, like they just need to do the front office just needs to do their job. Mm-hmm. They need to build players around Andrew Luck, and there have been instances instances where a team has all this cap space and all this potential, and the front office does nothing with it, costing their team. Yeah, I think oh. we'll see the Colts be aggressive yeah, this off season. Well, let's hope so because we yeah, like I said, we've seen they figured out before. they figured out that Andrew Luck. Looks like that he's going to be a great quarterback again, and he he showed this year that he oh he is played still... great comeback player of the year yeah yeah for sure hands down for sure comeback player of the year and honestly if it wasn't for like a great season by Patrick Mahomes and Drew Brees he might be up for MVP absolutely and you know what like more importantly him just showing that he can play a full season not get injured and not just that but actually be a pro bowl caliber player oh, yeah. in his first year back because he missed a lot of time that shoulder injury was pretty serious and everyone's like can he throw the ball deep he threw the ball pretty deep in some games let's yeah. it wasn't just some I short don't know check if his down arm passes. strength is all the way back like i, I still feel like there's something a little bit missing but, but he's the fact accurate. is that andrew he's luck is a very accurate. smart quarterback yeah. and he knows how to play the game like, like he is from stanford after all 
So it is kind of funny that he it. followed Peyton Manning at Indianapolis because he does remind me a lot of how he manages the game, how he communicates to the players in the that's pocket. What, that's what the comparisons were. Him coming out of Stanford mm-hmm. was like, this guy's Peyton Manning when it comes to intelligence. Because I think Andrew Luck, take away the um, what he does great, like athletically and throwing the football. I think like he, he be might be coach. the perfect quarterback in the huddle and at the line of scrimmage. Mm-hmm. He, you know? Like he, you can see him as a head coach type of thing. Yeah, he knows exactly what's going on all the time. Uh, and he's, he's he knows how to get he, he knows how to change it in the right place like even when he plays tough defenses and even if his offense might not be as might be a little overmatched in terms of talent across the mm-hmm. board from the opposition i still feel like he has the upper hand because yeah. he knows how to he makes yeah. winning plays constantly yes that's and what he does let's be honest the Colts might be the most dangerous team going into the playoffs like momentum wise i think that they have a great opportunity yeah. against the Texans. It's, it's gonna be a great game the these thing is teams, about the these... texans is that they have a really good pass rush but the colts have a really good offensive line well um this is also a very interesting trivia both teams played each other the away team won both uh meetings by a whopping three points yeah. so obviously this is a very even matchup and it might be benefiting the away team. Who knows? But overall, you got to look at these teams are pretty darn even when it yeah, comes down to it. 37 to 34, the Texans won the first time. And then the Colts won 24-21 the second time. Yeah. I, I think we're going to see the same thing, right? I mm-hmm. see less than a one-score game. Oh, it's going to be great. It's, and honestly, it's the, I wouldn't it's the, bet. It's the wild card game I'm looking forward to the most. I wouldn't bet against the Colts right now. I know that the Texans it's, are good. It's a hard, it's a hard choice. Because mm-hmm. Texans are both are playing like really well also, and Deshaun Watson's playing amazing. Like yep. take nothing away from how good Deshaun Watson and how, maybe Deshaun Hawk, or uh, DeAndre Hopkins being the best wide receiver in the NFL right now. I mean, usually when two teams are even, the home team will be favored by three points. Like this is how mm-hmm. the betters and how, how Vegas is home yeah. field advantage. The Texans right now are a one point favorite. So that means that how eve that's that means that people think the Colts are the better team, but since they're not at home, the it's, line yeah. slightly favors the Texans. If well, it was a neutral field, the Colts would be favored. Yeah, probably. And like when you look at both T.Y. Hilton and and Hopkins on both sides of the ball, and Andrew Luck and Deshaun Watson, though that's a de- that's two of the deadliest one-two punches in the NFL. Absolutely. And T.Y. Hilton's one uh, of the most uh, underrated players. Oh, 100%. And I think Hopkins might be the best wide receiver in the NFL right now. Yeah, we talked it's about... It's hard to deny. We talked about Antonio Brown, Odell Beckham. I, I'd, say that, I'd, say that, I'd say there's four receivers that separate themselves from everybody else. Hopkins, Antonio Brown, mm-hmm. Odell Beckham, and Julio Jones. And then would, I would think you put we T.Y. Hilton? No, I I would still. He's still a special player. Though. He's great. He's great. Mm. He's absolutely great. But yeah, DeAndre De- 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 Hopkins is a completely different. When monster. I look at the NFL and the receivers, I see the first tier being those four. Oh yeah. And then after that, you can start talking about guys like T.Y. Hilton. Juju, mm-hmm. T.Y. Hilton come to mind. Um, let's see some other guys off the top. Kenny of my head. Stills maybe. Uh, Mark uh, Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Kill. Kill for sure. Oh, definitely. But see, I wouldn't put Tyreek Kill and oh, Michael He's Thomas. Getting, Michael Thomas for mm, sure would but probably be in there. I would say Tyreek Kill's getting close to that elite style receiver, though. He's he, a, he is. The only problem for Tyreek Kill, the thing that hurts him is the same thing that hurts T.Y. Hilton. They're not really red zone threats. Yeah. And like but, the four that we yeah. talked about, Julio, Antonio, uh, Hopkins, and Odell Beckham they can, can catch score anything. Well. If yeah. you single cover them, they're, that's what How their quarterback is How many times have going. we seen DeAndre Hopkins ca- catch in double coverage at the corner of the end zone where it looks like it's impossible and he just holds yeah, on to the football? he just toe taps it in the corner and he, and he catches the Effortlessly. ball. Effortlessly. And he holds the ball out and that's the defender the can't hit it away. Yeah. He, the defender pushes him in the back, he's but he's already He's got the scored. length. He's got the strength. He's got the speed. Yeah, that's why I, I won't honestly. He if doesn't we, drop anything. <laughs> if, if I had to rank him right now, Hopkins is number one for me. It's hard. It's I hard would to say argue. Hopkins number one. Like if I, this is how I view this conversation. If I was an NFL team and I could pick any receiver oh, right yeah. now, I would take Hopkins. I would take Hopkins. I he does be, have the benefit of the I, doubt that he's younger than Antonio Brown because that yeah. would probably be my number two. That maybe even Julio, but he's at their in age as well. Julio's about the same age as Brown, and Julio gets nicked up a lot. Yeah. So, but we're talking but about like this Hopkins, is Hopkins. Yeah, I'm, I have to go with Hopkins. This is one of those arguments that all player, all of these players are so good that you have to start talking about little things like that. It's like, like Sophie's choice. It's like Julio Jones has a toe injury that comes back every yeah. once in a while, and he like doesn't play or he plays hurt. Whereas I feel like Hopkins. 
even when he's Take nothing away up, from he Julio plays Jones, every game and he balls out every game. Yeah. yeah. And I've seen DeAndre Hopkins do it with Tom Savage. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. TJ right. Yates. Uh, uh, what's his name? Brian Bro- Hoyer. Brock Osweiler. Yeah. I've Bro- seen oh my him. god, Brian Hoyer. I forgot about him. I've seen him do it with terrible quarterbacks where. I haven't seen the other guys do well, a terrible the thing quarterback. Is, now he's with a very talented quarterback in Watson, and he's playing the best football. Yeah, it's that, not, that's it's not unstoppable. yeah. And like when you look at this, when you look at on like on paper, Texans are saying that's not watch out for Sean Watson. It's like let's get Hopkins out of this game, but you can't. He's just that good. You and, you might be able to stop him over the top, but he is so good at the short intermediate routes that. I've seen, he can, he, and he's still, I've seen multiple games where Deshaun Watson, there'll be like four or five passes in a row to Hopkins on like an out route or a slant. Like he just wins the he, five to 10 yard yeah, game every time. Even on those deep routes, he still can catch the ball. Like he's a, he's, oh yeah. The, he's the, you elite can't single elite. cover him. Yeah. And it's like, it's unreal how talented this guy is. And he really came out of nowhere when he first started in the NFL. Like I don't even know what college you went to if you can, if you have to ask me on the spot. But, where did he go to school? Yeah, isn't that a, like it's UCF? But we'll talk about them later. <laughs> did he go to Clemson? Uh, that was someone else. I know you're. Um, that was uh, what's his name? Uh, Sammy Watkins. Sammy Watkins did go to Clemson. I think they just sound alike. Um, let's see. Thank you, Internet. Uh, he went to. He went to Clemson. Oh, he did go to Clemson. I'd be damned. He did. But this is before they went to like their. I mean, run. did they really have a team with Hopkins? And- they did. I do remember. In 2013? This stat. I do remember this stat. Hopkins. Hopkins must have been like a free agent or, or a, 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 a freshman or something. He must have been pretty young. Yeah. Um, he He graduated in 2013, so. This is the same draft Emmanuel, E.J. Emanuel was drafted. Remember him? I do. Yeah, good times. But, yeah, uh, Watkins must have been like a freshman or pretty young in all things considered because he was uh, pretty sure he was drafted in like 2015, 16. He was drafted 2014. So Really? They, were, they played college at the same time. Wow. I thought he played a lot later. Mm-hmm. That's and crazy. Talk about a very disappointing season for him. All things he too. just is hurt all the time. He is a great player when he's healthy, but he's hurt all the time. He's been hurt for a lot, oh, most of the last couple of years. So yeah, it's unfortunate for him. But going back to the Steelers, um, I kind of feel like this is the kind of stuff that happens when teams lose. I mean, obviously, this is a bitter pill for them to swallow. They were winning the division. It looked like they were, it looked like they were more likely to get a first round bye than to not make the playoffs like three weeks ago. And then everything just went downhill. Right? Yeah. It, yeah. it like they were looking at it we could get a first round bye. Uncontrollably. Yeah. It it was we could get a first round bye to oh, we're not we're not even gonna make the playoffs now. So yeah. now I think there's a lot of this stuff coming out. I don't know about this whole Antonio Brown thing. I, I still feel like he's going to be a Steeler, but maybe the Steelers I, should I think about parting ways surprised. with Big Ben or maybe Mike Tomlin. Like it Honestly, seems like something needs to change at the top. Big, rather Big than Ben is the circle. Like I'm putting a circle on him because he's arguing with everyone. What about on his Mike team? Tomlin though? The Steelers never fire coaches, but is he a good coach? Because too, I feel like he's too much of a pushover. He lets the team run team, all over him. He's a defensive coach, but why are his defenses usually not good? They were pretty decent this but year, but why are they usually not don't good? Don't you feel like he's kind of a pushover, though? He kind of lets the players run the team. and he Because like if, ben, if he really disciplined Ben Roethlisberger, we wouldn't see him arguing with every single player that would come out of that team. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a fair question. Um, I'm not really sure, but my, for me, my whole thing is like, If you're a head coach, you probably have a specialty, but if you're not good at your specialty, and in this case, it's Mike Tomlin in defense, it just makes me like wonder, like, um, so if you can't be a strong coordinator Mm -hmm. or a strong coach on the, on one side of the ball, what are you, you must be really good at game management, really good at player management. And I don't know if Mike Tomlin is those are like, is both of those things. I don't think so either. But again, this is the Steelers. They really never fire coaches. They never fire coaches, but I think it's safe to say that maybe the they Steelers... They like four, right? Yeah. Four in their whole history? Maybe the Steelers have to accept the fact that they might need to rebuild. 
that's hard for them to swallow because the Steelers are always this great and you, team. And you know what we talked about Antonio Brown, Brown but you know Ben Roethlisberger after they drafted Mason Rudolph, I thought was very immature last oh, year. Oh, extremely like, immature. He doesn't talk to him. And, and you like, gotta be a leader. We're talking about a guy who openly talked about him possibly retiring during the season last year, and then they were, he's upset when they spend a third round draft pick on another quarterback. Like that doesn't make any sense. You're telling your boss he's a hypocrite. I might be leaving, so your boss goes and finds your apprentice, and then you get mad. And you you don't even try to help the kid. You distance yourself from him. That's not what a that's not what a leader does. And he says the and he says everyone should follow him. Yeah, I that's backwards. Sometimes I like to distance myself, and I do that with audiobooks. It gives me a chance to just nice sit back, relax, sit on the couch, or even when I'm in the car, just kind of step back for a moment, t- take a step away from reality, and just listen a little bit more. And there's no better place to do that than with Audible. Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet, and now Audible members get more than ever before. Each month, you get three titles of your choice, one audiobook, two Audible Originals, and fitness programs that you can't get anywhere else. There's never been a better time to experience Audible. Try it for free today for the listeners of this show. Go to audible.com slash book, or you don't even have to do that. Get out your cell phone, text the word GSMC book to 500-500. Do it today. What happens to your decision-making when you drink? Well, after one drink, you feel confident. A few more, and calling your ex at 1 a.m. seems like a great idea. And you're pretty sure the secret to a great taco is four-day-old macaroni. The bottom line, drunk you doesn't make great decisions. So you're risking a DUI or worse if you count on him to get you home. Plan before you party. Get home safe. Brought to you by Washington Target. Welcome back, everyone, to the GSMC Sports Podcast. We just talked about the Antonio Brown Steelers and Big situation. Ben. Yes, and Big Ben issues, as well as other wide receivers in the NFL. But now, let's move on to college football because New Year's Day is usually is what we call bowl game. It's it's the day of bowl, the major bowl games. Maybe it should just be called the Super Bowls. No, no. It's. I, I, I feel like I NFL would sue. No, NFL would sue them so hard. By the way, when we get closer to that game in the NFL, the last game of the season between the two teams, are we allowed to say that those words? Or because uh, you know how some, you know how the, the that game is, some programs can't say that. Really? Yeah, and like some advertisers can't do it. That's why when you see advertisements about that game, it'll say, "Get your cheez its for the big game" instead of for that because it's like a registered it's a registered uh, phrase like two what? words. They're getting paid. They're paying millions of dollars to get a commercial on that. Well, I mean, you. I think they can when they're when they have a when they have a Super Bowl commercial, right? Like they can use it during. You it, have to. Oh, I see. What but you're they saying. can't when it's like if it's Tostitos and it's the week before. They can't be like stock up for the Super Bowl. They have to say stock up for the big game. Watch, so should we get it. sued? We're gonna get sued now. You'll, you'll notice it this year because I pointed it out. You'll, they'll be like the it, big, it's, the big it's one. one. Those, it's one of those things you don't notice, and someone points out. You're like, oh my god, have I not noticed this before? You'll, you'll hear him say the big one or you the know, big match. Thinking about all my all the commercials, <laughs> like I remember, like you're totally right. It, just, it's uh, it's just one. I don't know what the rules are regarding that, but I was just making a joke. Like, are we allowed to? It's kind of like it's kind of like the rule. No one really notices that you can't consume alcohol in commercials, and you never see. Them it's like drinking. the Tuck rule. Nobody knew it, it was a thing yeah. until you knew it was but, a thing. And you and then you go, oh wait, you know those beer commercials? They never drink the beer. They always are just holding it and cheers. Have it. you noticed lately too? I I pointed this out to some friends, some family uh, about a week or two ago. But all these alcohol commercials now are really heavy on the make sure to drink water. Like, I don't know if that's oh, yeah. an FCC thing or well, I think, what. I think some people have died of alcohol. I think well, it was yeah, a real, yeah. There, I mean, I get it. Uh-huh, but but it, I, it seems like 
there like I watched a Crown Royal commercial, I watched a Bud Light commercial and there was an so it was like a hard liquor commercial, mm. a beer commercial and another I think it was another hard liquor, but they were like Maybe, and after maybe your beer, drink a cup of water. And after your shot, drink like it's like more. I think prevalent. it's a more of a PSA than anything. I think that they're like mandated by. I don't know. There probably maybe is a not, law that passed. Or maybe something. maybe just to talk like maybe bring this up. Maybe just for the safety of others. Type of I thing. always thought that like I've been noticing it lately, and I'm like, I know that they're like doing it to be like socially conscious, but it seems like it's a little bit forced because every commercial mm-hmm. is like that now. Yeah. Instead of like, oh, we're just like yeah. a nice company that cares about people. Now it's like. It's like the little script on well, the bottom. It, it, please be drink responsibly. Please drink responsibly. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's, I, I think it's just like one of those things. Not a lot of people know to drink water. They're like, oh, I'm just going to drink alcohol. That's That destroys Dude, your body. I have to drink water nowadays when I drink alcohol or else. Yeah, like, I am the same exact way. I'm like, it's too much. He's like, you want to do a shot? I'm like, can I just drink like two bottles of water first? Then I'll take that shot. Yeah. It's like, I'll, I'll have a drink with a, with a little bit of liquor in it, but then I'll yeah, yeah. chase it with the water. Yeah, exactly. But uh, anyways, we're going to move right into the bowl game. <laughs> so the, so Super the bowl Crown games. Royal Bowl game didn't happen yesterday, but we did have what? That's probably going to be a thing later, huh? Probably, there probably yeah. is already one that we just don't even know about. There's a million. But we should talk about games. the Fiesta Bowl as the undefeated national champion, quote unquote, UCF team played. The, what are they called? What are they called? We don't even know. I don't no know. one, no one calls them by their nicknames. They're the Central Florida Floridians. What? The no. Floridians. Isn't that what I you think call it's people like from the Florida? Dra- it's the t- it's the Knights. It's the UCF Knights. Yes, yeah, the Golden Knights, right? The it, Golden. It's Knights. just the Knights. It's not the Golden Knights. Nope, just says right. Knights. All right. Um, which is uh, the Golden Knights are hockey. You're That's thinking, right. You're thinking of the, the, the Las you're Vegas. Right, you're right. And on the LSU Tigers. Well, everyone really knows the LSU Tigers. Mm-hmm. But uh, anyways. They defeated the UCF Knights forty to thirty two. Ending, ending that debate, right? Well, yes. Ending the UCF for president debate. Was it wasn't it like a twenty five game winning streak that got yes, snapped? Yes, twenty five. Twenty five games. Pretty good in a heart in yeah, which is that's like over five hundred days. It was roughly over that much as undefeated, which is incredible. They're they're a great team, but I, it is a little bit nauseating I, I, to hear about I, yeah. how they should be in the college football playoffs. So well, for mean, me, I wasn't terribly they, disappointed. When else that they are you going to hear about Central Florida? They got to get their name out sooner or later. It's like when a team does good and they never talk. Like literally Chicago in like the Sweet Sixteen in the Final Four, everyone was talking about them. It's nice to hear about the underdog type thing. That's what I was mm-hmm. getting at. But honestly, I could see UCF doing another winning streak. Like, obviously, they're going to get good. Yeah, they're getting, they play they're in gonna, the right I, I, situation. They could get some four or three-star recruits, maybe in a one or two five-stars. Yeah, they play in a in a conference that they're the elite. USA, yeah. They're kind of like how Boise State was, right? Like, oh, yeah. Boise State was just killing the whack. For they her. almost made it in the national championship, but they screwed it up against uh, Nevada that one year. They did. That over that crazy overtime. The guy game. were missed, like, 17 field goals. And who was quarterback for Nevada that game? I don't know. Some guy named... Collins something? Yeah, Kaepernick or another. Nah, eh, whatever. Who who's that anyway? Some unknown guy. Yeah, I I heard he has a humongous afro now. I uh, I heard that he once played in a Super Bowl and can't get on an NFL team. And Nathan Peterman can get signed by the Raiders. <laughs> what is up with that? Uh, Did we talk we about know that? What's up with it? I just think that's like that's stupid. My but opinion. anyways, uh, UCF who has famous quarterback Blake Bortles who went to their school. Let's Blake not talk Bortles. about that. Well, okay. UCF's defense, their starting quarterback did have a gruesome leg injury where he almost lost his leg. Did you see him on the sideline? No, I didn't. He was on the sideline perched up like he was sitting with like with like his leg in the cast, like with his leg out. Oh, wait. Yes, I did see that. Yeah. I thought it was, was pretty cool that he was there, but that's good. It, was an in- it was a weird thing to see at the same time. It was but like... It's like, that's dangerous how, also. It's like, man, that's... Not what everybody wants to remember, you know. Well, I think it's it's not him trying to get in the spotlight; it's him just in support of his team. I agree it's an with unselfish that. thing. I agree with that. And honestly, if he was in the game, maybe this they is a they're different playing in outcome. Arizona, right? At the Fiesta Bowl. That's a University of Phoenix. It's the University of Phoenix Stadium, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, that's he's wearing like shorts and a t-shirt. I'm like, oh yeah, Arizona, it's hot like, where in the January. Heck is he? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, if I honestly, if they have if they have their starting quarterback, maybe this game's a little different. Maybe. This Maybe. Game, this game also, LSU, I think they had eight starters that didn't play on defense. Yeah. A couple more on offense. So, But they're still they're – still, even if their like backups are five, yeah. four-star recruits. It, it is one of those things where you, we can say, like, well, if they have their quarterback, but at the same time we can say, well, if LSU and all their players cared about this game and it was yeah. like a playoff even game. Even the players that were playing, 
they like, like we said, four or five star recruits. Mm-hmm. Like this is still an elite recruiting class. They're always in oh, the yeah. top ten in recruits. Oh yeah, even the top five was like that's usual for them. So it's just mm-hmm. like that's we're used to. Uh, but want to move on? Anything yeah, else let's talk go. About? There's the, a couple other bo- Citrus big games. Bowl, Kentucky versus uh, Penn State. I, I was I, actually I, interested in this game. I watched. I a was lot of this too. Game. I enjoyed this game very much. Kentucky. It's nice to see a team that's so solely on basketball become great at football. Uh, honestly, Kentucky was the only reason team. why I watch this game is because I think Josh Allen is a beast, and he was a beast. He is projected now to go up to the number two pick. Did he in get the three draft. sacks yesterday? He got three sacks. He had that a- guy against, against if, a Penn State offensive line that's very touted. I, I'm very big excellent. on prospects, and I'm big on the NFL draft, and. He is right now, as of January 2nd, 2019, let's say it again, 2019, trying to remember this. Oh, I, I do the 2019, same 2019, 2019, okay. I'll probably say 2018 like 35, 36 more times before I it's figure January it out. It's January 2nd. It's okay. But anyways, as of January 2nd, 2019, I think Josh Allen's the best player in going into the draft. I think he's better than Nick Bosa. And I say that because not only does he get it done – rushing the passer the dude just is a game wrecker like oh yeah he he reminds me of khalil mack to me where oh, i can see the resemblance i know it's makes, easy it makes, to say it makes players better i know it's him. easy to say nick bosa reminds me of joey bosa but they do kind of are the same player i mean they really kind of are uh, and their brothers but do like, you again, worry that's lazy. like do you worry with nick bosa his brother has so many injuries do you see the same thing happening to his brother i look at I, that, I, that's I'm not what, sure. That's kind of the reasons why he left Ohio that State. That would be the concern. He didn't play this year because, because he got hurt. Because he was worried about it, and he got hurt. Because he, he got was hurt, worried he was about, worried about getting hurt again. Re-aggravating it, yes. But when I look at Josh Allen, I see a body type. He reminds me of Patrick looks, Willis. I see a body. I see a player. I don't know why. I don't know what it is, but I think he looks durable. Like He passes the mm. eye durability But the test. thing is, he also has some speed on him. He's fast. He's strong. He's a beast, man. He can. He he's, can, but he's he can also. Mac. He's also. He's, he's not just a great pass rusher. He's he can, he can cover guys in the in the Absolutely. short slants. This guy has a total package. And honestly, if he goes first, it would not surprise me. His, his speed, but up I don't. The edge I, is incredible. I think. I think just because Nick Bosa is so highly touted at the moment, he's going to go first regardless. What happens? I think if uh, people who listen to the show, if you're not big on college football or watch it, just know that this this edge rusher is and it's super not quick. the quarterback for buffalo it's jo- he josh he seems Allen. like he's a little bit more compact of an athlete kind of like a cool mac that's why he reminds me and of him I, th- I think coming out of kentucky he has a little more drive in him like more things to prove and he said yesterday after the game he said if i'm not the number one player in the country who is or something to, to that he it's said like if i'm not like who is who are you picking over me and i agree I, defense I mean, wise i completely agree and I like that. Like I like that, that Drive, arrogance that and tenacity from a from a pass rusher yeah. like that. And um, I do see the Cardinals though might be taking offensive linemen because they desperately need offensive linemen. They could. I can see them getting Nick Bosa. They could get Bosa uh, because everyone's calling this a Nick Bosa sweepstakes, which I started like as the season progressed. I started not to agree with the one thing that's that's kind of cool if the Cardinals take Bosa or the Forty ers take Bosa is that he'll be close to his brother. He will either be playing L.A. to Arizona or L.A. to San Francisco. Like, he will be pretty – as close as pretty much you can Or get. they both pass on him and he goes to New York. Yes. Or he could go to the Raiders, I guess, and still be close for – The Raiders yeah. have the fourth pick or third pick? The fourth, yeah. So the Jets would have to pass on him. I don't think Nick Bosa is dropping that low, though. No, probably because, not. But well, it is interesting that three of the top four, he would be really close proximity-wise to his brother because the Raiders would actually be the Raiders would actually be closer than the 49ers and the Cardinals when they moved to Vegas because Vegas to LA is the shortest Aloha. shorter distance. That's actually pretty <laughs> pretty interesting. It that. is very interesting. I would love to see that. But I honestly, um, I see him going number one just because everyone's saying this is the Nick Bosa sweepstakes, and sometimes scouts are just gonna like, okay, we got we got the number one pick. We're getting Nick. People Bosa. say that, but I don't think like if it was a quarterback and the team that was at the top was gonna draft a quarterback, I'd say like I feel like yeah, Nick Bosa might be the number one. We, pick. We know for a fact, but I'll not tell you right now, if Nick Bosa ended up after the combine, you know how players jump up the board, drop down the board. He's probably gonna if he if he does. Well, in the combine, he's going number. But one. Nick Bosa does need to do well at the combine. He needs. He has to. So if he, let's say he has all this a, training would be for nothing. Let's see if Ohio he has State a mediocre nothing. combine. Yeah, I can see him fall into five, six, and because he left to train, so he should be just solely training on combine stuff, shouldn't he? That's, just running forties every single day, just doing yeah. the cone drills and every single day. If he does that, and he has an excellent combine. He's going number one. That so just, that'll uh, make everyone like pro point proof, and he's the best player in the. Why draft. don't we talk about the Rose Bowl in uh, Urban Meyer's last game? Yeah, speaking of Ohio State. 
Yeah. Um, 28 23. It was 28 to 3 going into the fourth quarter. When mm-hmm. Washington, we, we both I was said, surprised it came we back. Both, we both said this was going to be a slaughter. And I, we, because of how they played against I Utah. I bet a lot of people who bet on this game were very upset that Ohio State let Washington get back in. They were they scored they were twenty eight to three in fourth quarter. Then it went to twenty three to twenty eight into the f- in final second. Yeah, Washington had a, no- a chance for an onside kick. I mean, if the if the kicker didn't make the worst attempt at an onside kick I've ever seen, I think his first kick was pretty decent. But they called a timeout. But he kind of gave up. He was like, eh. It kind of yeah. looked effortless. Um. But anyways, yes, though, it's Urban, Urban Meyer's Meyer. last game. Uh, at least for himself. now. Yeah, he says he doesn't see himself coaching again. His wife said that she hopes that he's done for good. Yeah, and after all this controversy that's happened this year with him in Ohio State. It's I feel like Urban Meyer is going to be the coach of USC in like two years. Probably. But <laughs> don't you think the controversies that happened this year with him are one of the bigger reasons he's leaving, retiring, quote-unquote? Yeah. Well, I, I, seen it, him. Has to put a, it has to be a factor. You know, it's hard to speculate on these, quote-unquote, health issues, but it is kind of like... It's one of those things where you don't want to, like, speculate on it because it makes you sound insensitive or sound like a jerk. But, like, you also wonder, and I know this might come off the wrong way, but you also wonder if, like, it's kind of a cop-out. Like, that that person can always use that if they want to leave or if things aren't going well. They could just be like, you know what? I have a health issue. Oh, use the health issue you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, like a crutch. And I'm not saying he's doing that, but, I mean, like, we've seen him leave, what, a couple jobs now? Like, he left Florida because of that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if it truly is a health thing, I hope all the best for him. But at the same time... It's almost like Boy Who Cried Wolf. At the same time, the cynic in me says, is Mm -hmm. it a health issue? Yeah, but again, I think, I personally think this might seem bad too, but the controversies were like the biggest reason. Yeah, I mean, that could definitely be it. And if that's the case, then... then, I feel like if if none of those leaked, or the coaches or anything leaked, he would still be coaching. Yeah, I will say that I hated how he handled that, how he ha- how he acted like everybody was against him, and then he said that he didn't lie. When he did lie, like, it doesn't mean you're a terrible human being, but you did lie. Mm-hmm. And he was so mad that people said he lied, when it's like, you said it on, you said it, you have, they have it recorded that you had no idea about the situation, and then it came out that you did know exactly what was going on in the situation. Like, there's no lie, there is a lie there. It, it, yes, I get why you're trying to lie because we all you always lie to protect yourself or whatever but um i hope all the best for him and hopefully he'll be back because college football is a better game with him i believe yeah so uh, what about the last uh the sugar, sugar bowl? bowl yeah uh, everyone thought texas was gonna lose this game i don't think i anyone thought so too um number 50 i thought georgia, georgia was eating a lot of crow today and they tweeted before their game about uh, you, uh, about the college football playoff. Got Notre Dame, right? Yeah, they're saying, why didn't we get in? We're one of the best teams well, in football. Well, you didn't get in because you lost three games this year. Two. Well, well, now three. Technically, yeah, I get it. But two heading into it. Yeah. And losing 28-21, it wasn't really that close. Those seven That's points. That's the crazy part to me is that I thought Georgia was going to win comfortably. Maybe not a huge blowout, but like I would thought, I would have thought like a ten to fourteen was point 20, win. It was twenty to seven going into halftime. They were getting beat the whole game. It was seventeen zero after the first quarter. Like it wasn't even close. The last score, the when they scored at the with under a minute left to make it a one score game, was the closest they had been since the beginning of the football game. And it they was didn't 10 score a point going into the second quarter. Their offense, that vaunted offense with Jake Fromm, didn't even score a point until like 10 minutes left in the second quarter. They're already yeah. down 17 nothing. And then they got roasted on Twitter after being As roasted. they should because yeah. you can't when you, you can't talk, talk early trash. like that, you have to you back, back it, up. it up. You can't if you're going to go out How there How many times have we seen someone talk so much trash and then just get knocked out and everyone's just like, "Oh, where are you now?" Yeah, you this is what you do. You go out, you smack Texas, you win by three touchdowns, and you say, "Yep, that's why we should have been in, not the other way around what they did." Yeah. Well, if they won, I think people would have said, yeah, they deserve to be in. But since they lost to number 15, Texas, and now thinks maybe Texas is coming back, maybe into a national championship consideration for next season. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely a possibility. Did you see my favorite part of this game was, did you see the um, the Longhorn try and the attack kill the, the, the bulldog? The, it, went, it was it was trying to kill him. That was honestly the best part of this. Film I was, in, I was like, and I it was, was a precursor to what actually happened. When I got, yeah, when I got the, <laughs> when I got the notification on my phone, like uh longhorn and mascot and bull, I'm like, Oh, are the two mascots just joking around fighting like a, like a playoff. Then I see a bull charging at a pit bull or just a bulldog. 
I'm like, wow, that's excessive. A bull trying to fight a dog. I feel like they planned that. <laughs> Don't you think Texas, like, they were, like, petting the heart, like, the bull going, go, ahead, go get him, boy. Go get him. Yeah. Um, and, the, and, the, and then the bulldog was not, it was just no-sold it. They pulled him out of the way. He was just like, bring it. I have to say, though, um, the bulldog showed incredible pocket awareness right there to get out of the get out of the pocket and scramble because... He was definitely done if that if that. If but that, he kind of uh, he kind of had it. He kind of had everyone to go whoa 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 before he even looked. He was yeah. looking. The he other got way. he got out of there though. I liked the the agility that I saw. I, I just can't believe that a bull attacked a dog on a football field. <sighs> yeah, or a longhorn if you want to be more precise. But uh, yeah, that's incredible. Um, really, just <laughs> everyone to read a story like that's like a storybook. And speaking of storybooks, would be all wouldn't it be better to listen to audiobooks? They motivate us, inspire us, even brings us closer. And there's no better place to listen than Audible. Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet. And now audio members get Audible members get more than ever before. Each month they get three titles of their choice. One audiobook, two Audible originals, and fitness programs they can't get anywhere else. There's never been a better time to experience Audible. Try it free for 30 days by visiting audible.com slash GSMC book or by texting the code GSMC book to 500500. Remember, if you want to try this free for 30 days, get a great deal for Audible, visit audible.com slash GSMC book, or by texting the code GSMC book to 500500. What happens to your decision making when you drink? Well, after one drink, you feel confident. A few more. And calling your ex at 1 a.m. seems like a great idea. And you're pretty sure the secret to a great taco is four-day-old macaroni. The bottom line, drunk you doesn't make great decisions. So you're risking a DUI or worse if you count on him to get you home. Plan before you party. Get home safe. Brought to you by Washington Target Series. Welcome back, everyone, to the GSMC Sports Podcast. We just finished talking about the bowl games that happened yesterday. Some people just hope that we finish talking, you know? Do you want to end the show now? What was up? What's up? I don't know. Let's uh, take a poll. Are you okay? <laughs> Is everything all right, buddy? No, no. You want me to, you want me to turn it off? Everything's great. It's 2019 New Year, new me. Don't be like everybody else nope, on new Twitter. New Year, new me. Oh, Instagram was full of those crap. Um, I'm running a half marathon this year. I hope you do. Three and months. I, 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 um, no. I'm going on a trip to Hawaii in March, and I want to get in shape by then. I'm trying to I'm working out more and eating right. I haven't had fast food in a couple of weeks, and I'm very proud of myself for that. That's good, man. I, I used to be really bad with my food eating, so I'm trying to work on it. That's good. Yeah. That's, uh, diet is much more important than the exercise part when Absolute, you're trying to lose absolutely. weight. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but spe- All right. We talked about the football, and that's going to basketball. Uh, we had some NBA games on New Year's Day. So not only did they get Christmas games, they get New Year's games. Um, what was like the most interesting game to you from yesterday? I think it was the Clippers and 76ers. That game was good for sure. But the Raptors Jazz was, was a good game too. It was mainly it was mainly Embiid getting up on Ben Simmons's case for that aggressive rebound. Yeah. No, no, I'm with you there. Um that was an interesting game because I feel like both of these teams, the Clippers and the Sixers, are like two teams that are really wondering if they're legit. Like, like mm-hmm. yes, they're good basketball teams, but like, can we contend this year? Can yeah. we win our conference? Obviously, but, for the Clippers, it's harder because they got to go through teams like yeah. Golden State and also the conference is just tougher. But, but it, uh, it, they're both kind of in a similar situation, so it was an interesting yeah. game. And, and I think the story of the game was Joel Embiid, 28 points, 19 rebounds. Just a monstrous performance again by the guy, and again helping out the team totally. And of course the uh, heated uh, Joel Embiid and Patrick Beverly, uh, little, and then Jimmy Butler gets in on it uh, against uh, Beverly. So Beverly's so, always mixing it up. And then and then uh, Avery Bradley got into it with Jimmy Butler. So there was there was about four two different fights from four different players, 
And it kind of surprised no one about it just because. And then, of course, why did Patrick Beverly mess with Joel Embiid when he's like a two feet taller than the guy? I don't know. And Embiid, Embiid would just stomp on him and he would win. Like, that's what I think. Raptors won 122, 116. Uh, Leonard, Leonard had a career high 45. He carries the team in this win, definitely. Uh,. And he had six rebounds. Almost he's, a, he's a superstar, but he's not like a huge scorer, you know? So, like, 45. Well, he's more defense. He's more one of the better defenders right. in the NBA. That's where he's yeah, All for. around, yeah. All but around player. he's now becoming maybe one of the best players. In the, he's one of the best players in the NBA by far. And I believe Kawhi's next game is against Spurs. Ooh, I am actually looking forward to that So, coming off career high, going back to play his former team, that should be fun. I think there's going to be a lot of hostility. Uh, maybe. What do you think the fan reaction will be? Bose. You think so? Because he has to be traded. He wanted out. So I feel like there's going to be booze. Yeah, maybe, but he also helped them win. Yes, but there's. I feel like if it's a mixed reaction, I call more booze than cheers. Is how he be. left. How uh, he left. This how, one actually is a how tough he one to left. Out. How he left wasn't pretty. This in, in, situation is actually interesting. And tough to figure out because I really don't know. I, I feel like obviously some people will cheer, some people will boo. I just don't know what the ratio will be. It'll be interesting to. It's not going to be 50 50. That's all I'm going to say. Really? Mm hmm. I don't know. What about time? Some time has passed, though, right? Like, it, it's been a while. Yeah. Maybe that will, I don't know, make everybody a little bit better in a better mood. And plus, the holidays just happen. I mean, people might be in a more cheerful mood attitude i guess possibly uh the blazers came back and beat the kings last night in overtime that was a an interesting game a layup by uh, leonard put that a game into overtime so does this bring the blazers gonna make a comeback into the top seed i don't know probably not i wouldn't say that but you know uh the west man the western conference is just tough like it's every night i mean portland just played the golden state warriors twice and they play the kings and they had to go to ot in this game so it's just the Western Conference. Buddy Heald, with another 27-point performance, all-star level stats for him. Don't yeah, you agree? I think he's top five in almost every shooting category as a two-guard in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And he's just lighting it up. You can see his confidence growing. It's just unfortunate for him he's in a small market, so he's not looked at as highly. But what do you get to do? Anyways, um, there were other games that happened. I want to talk about LeBron, though. He started practicing. Well, he started shooting for the first time since he's been hurt. He hasn't actually practiced at all, but yesterday he was able to put up some shots. Do you know that with the Lakers win against the Kings the other night, it was the first time a LeBron team playing without LeBron has won in 18 tries. They were 0-17 going into that game. That was the Lakers and the Cavaliers. I'm not sure if the Heat are included in that because we know LeBron doesn't miss too much time, but at least... The last 17 games, his team, playing without him, had lost. The That's losing, incredible. He, they might have been a bad record without LeBron in Miami, but the losing streak probably started in with uh, Cleveland and ended with Isn't that crazy? Is, uh, isn't that crazy, though, that he... Just point to that stat. When they say, how important is LeBron James? Well, my team never wins without me. <laughs> and, well, I mean, how important is LeBron? Look at Cleveland. Every time he leaves Cleveland, they're in the gutters. Yes. He comes back. They're in the finals again. I just thought that was a, a funny stat because the Lakers were on a losing streak since he got hurt, and who knows what they'll what? do without him. Okay, I'm sorry, but when you, the team is on the, the last place team in the NBA, and then you get LeBron James and you go to the NBA finals the next season, how can you not say he's one of the best? Oh, he's the best. Although, he, Him did, saying he did say the other day that he was the best after he that, beat the that, Warriors. That, I was like, ugh. Do you have? Why did you have to say that? I know. It's like I, 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 I understand what you're saying, but you said it in such a way that I'm like, I people are going to so disagree with you. I know Michael Jordan probably said he was the greatest ever, and everyone else like says this, but how he said it was like, yeah, I'm just the best ever. People just hate LeBron, and they hate when he. It's they factual. hate when people say even when they hate when people say that anybody's better than Jordan. So when he says he's better than Jordan or he's the best, that's basically what you're saying. Then it rubs people the wrong way. Yeah, I just how he said it was just like it's not like a Muhammad Ali like I'm the best ever and does all these rhymes. It was just like I'm the best ever. Kobe so, Bryant yeah. and his wife announced their fourth child and it's a girl again. That's four girls for Kobe. 
Yeah, he's never having a boy. Nope. 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 We're not going to see the, the name pass through the NBA again. Because his dad played, and then he played. Um, maybe. Maybe one of his daughters would be in the WNBA and just crush it. Probably. Uh, or they don't want to play basketball, which is fine. I'm sure that Kobe Bryant strikes me as the kind of person that whatever sport, because I know his kids will play sports, his girls, mm-hmm. whatever sport they play, I bet they'll kill it. Like, oh, yeah. They could be like the next Serena it's Williams. Genetics. Or, it's genetics, baby. Yeah, if they play tennis, it'll be the next Serena. They'll be the next, you know. like it'll Why do be, you think so many athletes' kids grow up to be superstars? They get it's all that genetics. specialized training, too. Right, yeah, from from, early from, age. from professional athletes. Yeah, that's how it works. They're around all these people that are great athletes. Like, yeah. um, like for example, uh, the soccer player um, Sergio Aguero. Mm-hmm. He's an Argentinian player. He plays for Manchester City. His f- uh, father-in-law is Diego Maradona. Right? Are you following with me? Yeah. I'm so he you. married Diego Maradona's wife or his daughter. Excuse me. <laughs> Jesus. That was a weird thing to that say. That was a very weird thing to say. And then they had a child. So Sergio Aguero's kid, his dad is Sergio Aguero, a great soccer player. His grandfather is Diego Maradona. And guess who his godfather is? Leo Messi. Well, that, so, that's not related, though. No, it's I know. Blood no, I know. I'm, okay. I'm just saying, like, his just grandfather's so Maradona, maybe the greatest player of all time, one of the top three or four. His dad is one of the greatest players in this generation, and his godfather might be one of the top two or three players ever as well. That is insane. <laughs> like, how surrounded by greatness sometimes makes that you is like greatness times three. <laughs> Four. I just add another number to that, like ten. I would say yeah. So that kid's growing up with everything, and he can just oh, I, he came out of his mother with a soccer ball. He'll be like, oh, dad, you're a right footed player, but I'm left footed. Oh, just call um call your grandfather. He'll he'll tell yeah. you how to play with your left foot. <laughs> yeah, he will teach you everything. <laughs> but we need to take a quick short break. When we get back, we'll talk about anything else about mm-hmm. what happened in the world of sports. We'll be right back, Brad, for this. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the final segment of the GSMC Sports Podcast. We've talked football, college football, and basketball. Now we got to talk about other things that are on the agenda. What's the last couple of things we should talk about? Uh, some very sad news. Um, Purdue superfan mm-hmm. Tyler Trent, who was dealing with a rare form of bone cancer. You might have seen him on ESPN. I know they had him on a bunch. They did a special. They did a special on him, and he was a, uh, he was a frequent visitor of the Scott Van Pelt show. Mm-hmm. He sadly passed away. He, I think it was 20 years old. He went to Purdue. Yeah. Um, they won that game against Ohio State this year, and they did it in yeah. his honor. And he, like, barely had the strength to get there. Like, he was yeah. deteriorating it pretty was, badly at that time. It was a very emotional time. And obviously, our thoughts and prayers go to his family. Very sad. Friends and all the loved ones. It's very sad. Yeah. Um, it, it's one of those... When a when somebody that young passes away from something, because he started, he had cancer when he was young, like fifteen or sixteen is the first mm-hmm. time he he beat it, and then it came back. Um, but it does, it is one of those times where, when something like that happens to somebody so young, it makes you question a lot of things, like other than sports, right? Like it questions, yeah, your belief system and things like that. But uh, 
it's a tough, tough, tough uh, ending for a life. But we, I can say that I kind of followed his story, his journey, and I thought he was an inspirational person. Yeah. Um, so our thoughts yes, to him and his family. Absolutely. Um, back to some better news, uh, some more cheery news. Uh, United States men's national team superstar Christian Pulisic, who has been playing for Borussia Dortmund, first place team in Germany, for the last, I think, three or four years now. He has agreed to join Chelsea Football Club. He will join them in the summer. So he will remain playing for his German team until the end of the season. But he has accepted a transfer to Chelsea, which which I think is cool because now he'll get to play in the English Premier League, probably the most followed league in the world. And the market is huge for that. Those games are on every week on mm-hmm. NBC. It'll be great for U.S. soccer fans to see him go against the world's best in the toughest league, in my opinion, in the world. Yeah, it's a truly an honor for him definitely to get this opportunity to play at one of the most elite clubs in the world, like you were saying. So, And it just puts U.S. soccer like more in a national, more of a public eye than it has been in recent years. So good on them. It, it only benefits the USA team for sure. Yeah, we will see what he does. So it'll be exciting in 2019, 2020 English Premier League season. You'll see Christian Pulisic. I'm assuming he'll be on the Chelsea squad. Uh, I guess there is a chance that he could be loaned out if he's not seen as a regular starter. But there could be a good opening for him as it appears that their star winger, Eden Hazard, might be on his way out as the transfer rumors have been circling around him. So he could be the guy that replaces him. That would be big shoes to fill. But, hey... It will be fun to see how that un- unwinds. So let's moving. Up. Let's move on to baseball. Troy Tulowitzki and the New York Yankees have agreed to a deal. Troy Tulowitzki will be playing baseball for the Yankees next year. What do you think about that? Uh, Yankees signing up an elite free agent. Not surprising. Well, I think he got him for the minimum. Or- the league minimum, they did, which is shocking to me because I thought he would get a massive deal. Or not a massive deal, but a good deal at best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It, he was once a great player. He's a little bit older now. I can't stay healthy, but maybe he can give the Yankees a little bit of pop off the bench, uh, be kind of a rotational type player, um, you know, bench player that can come in, play second, short, maybe third sometimes. But I don't know if he really does much, and I still think they're chasing the Red Sox at this point. But they, they might yeah. be the team that gets uh, Machado. They yeah. might be. And, yeah, that this is a classic Yankees, my opinion, of how just they can spend the money more like than a third world country has ever spent in their entire country's history. Mm-hmm. So that's just how that works. But anything else? That's it. All right, we're done here. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Please tune us in for the football podcast as well as the soccer podcast later today. And also, as always, I'm Jeff Malinoff. That's Mark Souza, and we will see you next time. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program